Hello, welcome to Papa Nick's Music. I am, as always, your host, Papa Nick Lewis. And today we've got another top 10. Um, when I first started thinking about doing the top 10 lists, um, largely it was because I wanted to be able to talk about artists that I like, but I don't necessarily like well enough to be able to do <laughs> like an album ranking video. Um, and today we've got a good example. I've always liked the band. Um, I like plenty of their songs, but I'm not all that fond of their albums. Um, <laughs> and it's not that I'm a greatest hits fan, although we're, we're pretty close. It's that on any given album, there are going to be like three or four songs that I really, really like, uh, three or four songs that I'm eh, ambivalent towards, and at least one or two that I think, oh, oh, um, I don't know that I would give any of their albums a good solid A, uh, much less an A plus. And if I can't, <laughs> if I can't give at least one of your albums an A, then yeah, I'm not going to rank your albums. But I still want to be able to talk about them. So today, we're going to to count off uh, my top ten songs by the band. Um, before we get into this, the subjectivity notice. Um, artistic appreciation is by definition subjective. There is no such thing as objectively good or objectively bad art. There is only art that I like and art that I do not like. And as long as we keep that in mind, this is a wonderful conversation. Um, it's, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's informative. It's good. Um, but as soon as one or the other of us decides that, no, what I think is in fact objectively true, that's when things go off the rails. So resist that temptation. Uh, I go out of my way to resist it. Um, so with that being said, these are the 10 songs by um, the band that I like the most. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler alert here. Uh, there are a few songs that, as soon as I say top 10 songs by the band, you're going to think these songs are in there. Uh, you're going to think that I'm going to have Up on Cripple Creek. You think that I'm going to have The Weight. You think that I'm going to have The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down. These are going to be songs in my top 10, you think. And I'm here to tell you, no. <laughs> these songs are not in my top 10. Um, I'm tired of Up on Cripple Creek. I've, I've, I've heard that song enough. I don't ever need to hear it again. Uh, I'm tired of the wait. I've heard that song enough. I don't ever need to hear it again. And I have never been particularly fond of the night they drove old Dixie down. Um, hearing Joan Baez sing it just tipped it over the edge for me. And it's like, okay, I really don't ever need to see, hear this thing again. Jesus Christ, I hate that song. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to be making a top ten that doesn't have their three... <laughs> most popular, most well-known songs. Yeah. Um, let's talk, before I get into the 10, though, let's talk a little bit about why I like this band. Uh, if I don't like uh, these, if I don't like Up on Cripple Creek, if I don't, if, if I outright hate The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, then you would be, I think, justified in asking, why am I doing this? Uh, and I'm doing this because I actually do like the band. Um, I like their music. Um, I think Robbie Robertson is a very good songwriter. He's a very professionally, technically proficient songwriter. His so I, I'm, I, I don't think I'm ever going to place him as one of the you know greatest all-time songwriters. But he knows what he's doing. He knows how to build a song, um, and he knows he knows how to have an interesting chord progression. He knows how to write a good melody. Uh, he, for the most part, he knows how to write a good lyric. Um, he is a competent professional songwriter. And so they're working from a base of, of competence there. Um, and we have an interesting mix of voices in this band. Uh, we've got three primary vocalists, uh, Lee Von Helm, Richard Manuel, and Rick Danko. And of the three of these, I love Richard Manuel and Rick Danko. Uh, their voices are just, I mean hauntingly beautiful, I think. I, I, I love listening to these two guys sing. Levon Helm, not so much. <laughs> um, uh, the, part of it is the, the, the drawly twang in his voice that, that gets on my nerves and gives me flashbacks to my youth. Uh, but a lot of it is just, there's a tonal quality to his voice that 
I do not find pleasing. I'm not going to go so far as to say that it irritates me, but I don't find his voice pleasing to listen to, um, which is one of the reasons why, you know, up on Cripple Creek, uh, the wait, the night they drove old Dixie down, he's singing all of those. And um, you're going to notice a, a, <laughs> a lack of Lee Von Helm sung songs in this top 10. But I do love, like I said, I do love Richard Manuel's voice. Uh, I mean, he's just, he's got just a beautiful voice. Rick Danko, beautiful voice. I could listen to these guys sing all day. And so when you've got good singers and you've got good material, then, yeah, I'm going to like this. Um, before I get into my top 10, I do want to have a quasi honorable mention. Uh, it's a song that I do want to call attention to. But it's never going to be in my top 10. It's not going to be in my top 10 because I can't listen to it with any frequency. Um, because I don't... The song itself is repetitious to the point where it's irritating. But I think that Richard Manuel's vocal in I Shall Be Released is stunning. Um, the, the, the soul that he has in his voice, the, the, the pain in his voice is just... Oh, it's amazing. Uh, and if the song were a little bit better, <laughs> I'd like it. <laughs> so, with that being said, these are my 10 favorite songs by the band. Coming in at number 10, um, one of two, uh, got my list right over here, one of two songs from music from Big Pink that I have in my uh, top 10, uh, recorded in 1968. This is Richard Manuel's vocal of Tears of Rage. Oh, I love this song. Um, it's a little bit more despondent, <laughs> which, you know, tears of rage. Yeah, I could see that one coming. Uh, I tend to like upbeat and happy rather than despondent. Um, but it's just such a beautiful song. Um, and Richard Manuel's vocal is wonderful. Number 10, Tears of Rage. Love that song. Coming in at number nine, I've got one of two songs from their Northern Lights Southern Cross album from 1975. Uh, this is also one of two songs sung solely by LeVon Helm, and that is Ophelia. I really like Ophelia. It's got a nice timeless quality to it. It sounds like something that could have been written in the, in the 70s as it was. It could have been written in the 60s. It could have been written in the 20s or 30s. I love that. I, I like music that transcends its time period. Uh, and Ophelia does that. It's a great song. Uh, it's Toe Tappy. And I can listen to LeVon Helm sing that without flinching too much. So, number nine, Ophelia. Coming in at number eight, uh, one of three songs on my list from their 1970 album, Stage Fright, which I will be honest is probably my favorite uh, album by the band. <laughs> this song, number eight, is Time to Kill. Um... We've got uh, vocals shared by Rick Danko and Richard Manuel, which is just uh, best of all possible worlds, right? We've got both of these guys singing. Uh, Time to Kill is a great song. I really like Time to Kill. Coming in at number seven, the other song from Music from Big Pink, uh, for my money, the best song on Music from Big Pink. It is, if I ever buy a copy of Music from Big Pink, it will be so that I will have this uh, song and I've already got this song on a couple of different compilations that I have of band uh, uh, songs. So it's highly unlikely that I'm ever going to plunk down my money for a copy of music from Big Pink. But if I were to plunk down that money, it would be so that I would have my very own copy on the original album where it appeared of Chest Fever. I love this song. Mostly I love this song because I love Garth Hudson's uh, organ uh, introduction. Garth Hudson, hell of a musician. I, oh, oh. <laughs> chest fever. I have no idea what the lyrics are. <laughs> I've, you know, this is to me when I listen to it, it's 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 reminiscent uh, of the closing uh, theme um, song for the sitcom WKRP in Cincinnati. Right, uh, the 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 music that they play over the final credits uh, is gibberish. There there are no words to that. It's that's the point of it. The 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 person who wrote the music. Uh, when they were recording the song, um, the uh, I blanked out on his name. Hugh, what's Hugh's last name? 
Uh, I'll put a crawl down below that tells you what Hugh's last name is. But he's the the creator and writer. Hugh Wilson was the creator and writer of WKRP. Uh, and he's in there uh, while the guy is uh, recording this music that's going to be the, the, the uh, song that plays over the final credits. Um, and he wanted to have a sense of what the words would sound like once they had words written. So he had the guy just do gibberish in a, in a rock star voice um, while they were recording it. And he liked the gibberish so much that he kept it. There are no words to that. That's how I hear chest fever. I, it, there are probably words in there, but I have no idea what they are. It's, <laughs> it's just gibberish to me. But I love that organ, and I love the tune. Chest fever, number seven. Coming in at number six, we have the one song off of their 1971 album, Cahoots, which is just a fun thing to say. Cahoots. Ooh. Um, and that is Life is a Carnival. Um, I read once that um, Alan Toussaint did the uh, horn arrangements for the songs on Cahoots, including Life is a Carnival. And Robbie Robertson had sent him the 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 bass tracks for the song um so they had recorded the the drums the keyboards the bass the guitar uh he had even recorded his guitar solos and then he sent all of that to alan toussaint who then uh, crafted a horn arrangement that filled in all the gaps um which is just amazing when i listen to the song now because it sounds to me like there is interplay between the horns and the solo guitar. And there's not. That's Robbie Robertson doing a solo, and then Alan Toussaint is providing all of the interplay. I think it's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, and I really like the song. Life is a Carnival, uh, even though Lee Von Helm does most of the singing. It's a great song. Okay, coming in at number five. This is the one song that features a lead vocal by LeVon Helm that I don't think anybody else in the band could have done any better. Um, it is a cover. It's not an original song. Uh, and it's off their live album, uh, Rock of Ages, from 1972. And that is Don't Do It. I love this song. Um, the first time I heard this, when I was in uh, high school, junior high, that in you know, eighth, ninth grade, somewhere in there, um, I bought the the best of the band, that, that that greatest hits album that they had out in the late seventies, and it had "Don't Do It" on it. Um, and when I first listened to that, the first time I had not heard it prior to hearing it in that compilation, I didn't realize it was a live song until the end, when there's a little bit of a breakdown and you can finally hear crowd noise. Up to that point, I thought it was just a studio song. Um, and I was amazed at the energy that it had. As soon as I realized it was a live track, I was even more amazed at how good it was. Um, this is, I, I'm really impressed with this, with this recording. I like the song as well. I, I love the energy of the song. And that little turnaround at the end, the biggest mistake was loving you too much. Boom, boom. And it heads into the, 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 the final bit. Man, I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about it. This is a great song. Uh, it's a great performance of a good song. Um, and as much shit as I was heaping on LeVon Helm earlier, okay, I'm, I'm going to take, take most of it back right now because he knocks this thing out of the park. Number five, don't do it. Okay, number four, we've got the only song on my list from the 1969 uh, self-titled album, The Band, um, and that is King Harvest Has Surely Come. I love this song. Um, I'm not sure why. Every once in a while, I'll have a song that very strongly evokes a sensory impression or emotional impression with me. Um, and sometimes I can see why it does. There's, there's some uh, connection between the sensory or emotional image and, say, the lyrical content of the song. That's not the case here. Um, with the possible exception of it's got the word harvest uh, in the title. But this song, every time I listen to it, it, it makes me think of autumn. And autumn is my favorite time of year uh, when I'm living in a part of the country that actually has seasons, as opposed to central Texas, where the seasons are either damn hot or not as hot or, ooh, it's a little chilly. <laughs> um, but that, that, that certain time there, as we get into, I mean, the meat of autumn, 
when the the air the 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 air in the morning is a little bit on the crisp side uh when you're walking out uh you're walking down the street you're thinking oh i wish i'd brought a jacket today and the the wind has just that that bare scent. you know it's cooler than it has been and then every once in a while there's a nice really cool uh blast within the wind and you can smell leaves burning oh this is my favorite time of year this 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 image is my favorite time of year. And I get that image every time I listen to King Harvest Has Surely Come. I, again, have no idea why, because this has nothing to do with autumn. There's just something about it. It sounds like autumn to me. I love this song. Um, and it's a pretty good uh, vocal by Richard Manuel as well. So, gotta like that. Okay. Um, it did not take me long to generate this list of ten. It took me a little while to organize it. Um, Ophelia, in particular, was bopping around <laughs> this top ten. Yeah, it took a while for it to settle in at, at, at number nine. Uh, but these top three have been the top three since I first started. If you ask me, what's your favorite, bam, the number one. What's your next favorite, bam, number two. What's your next favorite, bam, number three. And from then on, the, the decisions become difficult. Uh, but these top three are, hands down, my favorite songs by the band. Coming in at number three, from the album Stage Fright, the title track, Stage Fright, uh, one of Rick Danko's uh, better vocals. Um, I really like this song. Um, I like the melody of it. I like the chord progression. Uh, I love Rick Danko's vocal. Rick Danko is one of those, he could sing the phone book. I'm going to love listening to it. Um, really like Stage Fright. Um, so much so that if I'm going to buy, as I said earlier, if I'm going to buy one of these, it's going to be Stage Fright. Um, my number two song from Northern Lights Southern Cross is It Makes No Difference. I'm not normally a person who likes depressing songs, as I was saying earlier with Tears of Rage. I tend to like the upbeat and the happy. Um, but every once in a while I've, I come across a particularly powerful, sad song that I just adore. And It Makes No Difference is probably the best example of that. Um, I love this song. The, the emotional, the heartbreak in this song fits Rick Danko's vocal just perfectly. Um, there are some of these songs in this list uh, that I will occasionally perform when I'm, when I'm playing. Um, that I will, you know, if I've got a gathering out in the backyard, okay, I'll, I'll trot some of these out. Um, I like playing uh, Stage Fright. That's, that's a fun song. Uh, I like playing Ophelia. That's a, that's a fun song to play. Um, I'm not ever going to try to do It Makes No Difference. It's a wonderful song. Um, I, I play along with it when I'm listening to it because I love that chord progression. But there's no way I can make my voice even half as expressive as Rick Danko's is in this song. Oh, it Makes No Difference just breaks my heart every time I hear it. And I love that particular heartbreak. Number two, it makes no difference. But hands down, my favorite band song. Uh, another Richard Manuel uh, vocal performance, again off of the Stage Fright album, it's The Shape I'm In. Uh, I love this song. This is, out of these 10 songs, it's the one that's most likely to make it into one of my set lists because I just love playing it, I love singing it, I love listening to it. This is just a great song. Um, it there's a little extra emotional resonance uh, knowing as I know now that the man singing this was in fact wrestling with the very problems that he's singing about in the song um, to the point where he ends up taking his own life at a at a at a just frustratingly early age um, and so there's an element of, of pathos on this but for the most part I don't think about that when I'm listening to the song. I just think about what a wonderful song it is and how much I enjoy listening to it. Stage, uh, The Shape I'm In from Stage Fright, number one. And those are my top ten songs by the band. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think I got right. Tell me what you think I got wrong. I love having these conversations. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button. 
If you have not yet, please go ahead and click the subscribe button while you're there. And while you're clicking, go ahead and click that notification for uh, the icon for notifications as well. You might as well. Um, just click. Have, have, a, have, a, have a good click party down, <laughs> down there. Uh, leave a comment, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, and again, thank you very much for watching today. I appreciate your, your, your custom. And I hope that the rest of your day is delightful. See you soon.